Cam's first quilt patterns were embroidery patterns, easy enough for kids. I found a bird series with the name Ruby Short McKim printed right here. Now this is Robin Redbreast. Oh, but there's more birds. This one is the Blue Jay. And it says right here, get out your brightest blue embroidery floss for Mr. Blue Jay. His feathers are as loud as his voice. Well, these patterns ran in the Seattle Post Intelligencer under the byline of Prudence Penny. Oh, it's great. Well, Ruby liked to call these individual quilt patterns quilties. Now, she treated quilties as small designs that could be used individually or sewn together in large numbers for a bed quilt. Now, this tulip block that we've been working on from her 101 patchwork patterns could be used as a wall hanging, but I'm going to take this quilty and show you some different layout designs. Now the easiest one is this one. It's setting the tulip blocks together with solid rectangles cut the same size and then lining up the two blocks in rows on a strip of grass. Now you can put all the same colors of tulips in rows or you can just have a grand time and make them scrappy. Well, the second one is this one, setting the tulip blocks with rectangles cut half the length of the tulip block. And then you can arrange the colors in offset rows as this one, or just let the wind blow them about for a scrappy, colorful garden. The third layout I'm going to show you is the traditional layout designed by Ruby McKim with the same triangle sewn to both the tulip and rectangle and it gives the quilt or quilty that angular art deco look that Ruby was famous for. Let me get rid of these quilts and we'll dig in. The first setting that we're going to do is this one with the tulips growing straight out of the ground and then it's set together with solid squares the same size as the tulip block and then both of them are growing right out of that lush green grass. Ooh, it is easy to do. Now the first thing we need to do is change the shape of the polygon. Such an interesting shape with the points on each end. We need to change it into a rectangle. All we need to do is just add triangles to the top in the background fabric and then triangles to the bottom in the green fabric. Those triangles come from four inch squares. Now for each one you need to have one background and one green and only need to cut it once on one diagonal. Four inch squares and then take them and you just flip them right sides together to your tulip block. Now you can see right here I already did one of the background triangles. Equal tips hanging out on both sides. Quarter inch seam right along there. And then it's the same thing down here with the green. You always do opposite corners, equal tips hanging out. So let's just take this, get those pressed. You always want to set that seam. It is the bias, so just do it gently. And then just press right into that triangle. Same thing on the opposite corner. Work on opposite corners and you can do assembly line sewing. So I can use that quarter inch foot. Gosh, can't live without that quarter inch. All you need to do is just take right here where that tip is hanging out and just cut it square with the edge. Just straighten that off and then just flip that triangle right sides together to it and carefully center it. That's the most important thing. Actually, if you just line it up with that stem, that would probably be great. Equal tips here on both sides. Quarter inch seam allowance. It is the bias, so just go ahead, use your stiletto, hold that in place as you sew along there. You could assembly line sew just by budding all of those green triangles one after the other. But I'm just going to go ahead, clip those threads, turn it to the opposite side. Now up here, once again, just clip that right off of there. Always have a little pile of these things sitting beside me. Oh, they're just great to get rid of. <laughs> what can you do with them? Then take this center it again and this time when you center it you can just put the tip right along this seam and that'll center it perfectly. Quarter inch seam right along there. 
zip it right along. And that is it. We've got a rectangle. It's so easy to do. Now, set the seams once more. Lift this up and over. That finishes it out. Gosh, you could probably change the look a couple of times just by changing the color of the triangle. Now, this piece, the triangle pretty much, or the, the tulip pretty much measures out to be six inches in width. So the best ruler right now to square it up is the six inch by 24 inch ruler. And just take it and turn it so that the one is at the top, line up the sides of the tulip right along here. And you wanna make sure that you have that quarter inch seam right up at the top. So I'm gonna just line that up right there. I've got that quarter inch line on that seam. And down here, it's looking good. Make sure that the center of the three inch line goes right down through the center of the stem. Oh, perfect. All right, and just trim it up and across. I literally trimmed on two sides. Just get rid of that and then take it, turn it around. And this time you wanna make it consistent on each one of your tulips. When I place the line right down here at this end, it looks pretty much right about on 17. Well, I've got 17 down here. I've got my quarter inch seam up at the top, line up the six inch right through here. So now every time, I trim my tulips. I want to make them as close to 17 as I can. Well, let me get my tulips finished and I'll show you the layout. This is the best part, laying out all of the pieces. Now you take your solid square fabric and cut it exactly the same size as your tulip block. Remember mine was six inches by 17 inches, but you be sure and sew your tulip together and measure it before you cut. Now when you cut your background square, your background rectangle, you're gonna cut a long narrow strip and the thing is, you can only get two pieces out of one long strip. Oh, we've got a little bit of waste down in the end, but that's okay, save it for another quilt. And then once you have your tulips done, lay them out in rows. In the first row, I started out with the tulip and then the solid square and alternated between the two. Once you have your row planned, then just go ahead and flip your blocks into pairs. Assembly line, sew your pairs, and then sew your whole row together. Ooh, that was fast. At the bottom of the row, add a three inch strip of green, right sides together, flip it out and then press that seam towards the green. Now the second row alternates. It starts out with the solid rectangle and then it only has two tulips in the second row. Oh my gosh, why don't you just pick out your least favorite tulip, set that one aside and only use your two best ones in this row. At the bottom of it, add another green strip three inches wide, right sides together, fold it out. And so you just keep on repeating so that the third row now is exactly like your first row. Now this is actually a great lap robe size. It has eight tulip blocks and seven solid squares, but you could go ahead and just add five more tulips over a queen size, add another row on the bottom, make it nice and large. And then at the bottom of this row, the third row comes another green and then I like to frame three sides of the quilt with a three inch background strip. And so that comes next after you have your green. And I actually decided on using just the background on three sides because right up here at the top, you've got that wide white space already. After this comes the borders. Oh, it's great. Well, let me go ahead and show you the next layout. In this layout, the tulip blocks are set together with half blocks. Now you start out with a tulip block right here and then you divide it with this three inch strip. Now the next row starts out with a half, half block. It's actually the same size as the tulip right here. And then you can see you create that zigzag effect 
going throughout your quilt. Now when you're setting this together, oh, you would really want those rows to line up. Your mother-in-law will come by and she'll notice your rows are not perfectly straight. Well, there's a little trick to it so that you get those blocks just lined up perfectly. And it goes back to when you're trimming your, your polygon shape because you want to have both pieces exactly the same size. So take your tulip and just flip it right sides together to your leaf and trim right along there so that you know they're exactly equal in size. And then you just go on, take your background triangles, add them to the top, and the same thing down here with your greens. Now, once you have those on and squared up, you want to take this piece and measure it. Just put your 6 inch by 24 inch ruler on it. It should be 6 inches in width, but you see the whole length of it is around nine inches. So you want to cut pieces that are six by nine. That way, whenever you're putting them together, you're offsetting and they're going to line up perfectly. Oh, I've got one more piece right here. And then after you have your rows all laid out, sew them together in rows, just tulips and half blocks. Make all your rows and then use your inset pieces in between, your three inch strips in between. And like the last one, frame it on three sides with the background strips. Then onto the borders. Well, let's do the next layout. This is the original Ruby McKim tulip layout. And we've been working up to it. Oh, it's easy and it's great fun. Now, you make your tulip block turn it into the polygon, but when you do your triangles, this particular one, I used this print, did the four inch square, cut it in half, and then they get sewn on opposite corners. Then the two remaining corners are the green. Now there is also a solid rectangle cut exactly the same size, and once again, it's exactly the same. You see the green and the print, the print in the opposite corner down here, green opposite corner. So when you put the four together, you create the secondary pattern right in the center with the triangles. Ooh, it's great. Now to get that solid rectangle, you just measure your block and then cut your rectangle from a solid square. Now this particular block is about 17 and 3 fourths inches long by 6 inches wide and then take your square up ruler, your 12 and a half inch square up ruler, line up your rectangle on the grid. So I can focus on that three inch point right in the center. I'm just gonna put the tip of the ruler right at the three inch line, the tip of the ruler right down here at the three inch line, and then just go ahead and trim away those triangles. Now these particular ones are waste. You can't use them, but go on, cut the opposite sides, and then you just continue sewing your triangles on exactly like we did with the other ones. Just flip them right sides together, sew it here, and then down here on the opposite corner. Fold them out, green on the other two sides. Well, let me just take these blocks, sew them together, and we're going to go on and do some machine quilting and binding. I have my quilt top sewn together and I'm turning it into a quilt sandwich. Mmm, that's good. Anyhow, the backing is the bottom layer. I'm just using plain muslin, but you can go ahead and use a print, a calico if you'd like. Now my batting is 100% cotton. It's fairly thin, but I'd like it to look like those antique quilts by Ruby McKim. And then the quilt comes next, right side up. I pressed it, I cut off all of the threads, and you just smooth it from the center out. Make sure that you don't have any um, puckers in the bottom. Pull it out, and the next thing is to clamp it. Now, you can go ahead and use these binder clamps that you just get at the office supply. Clamp them along the edge of the table, or you can use these little white clamps, and they just wrap right around the table. Perfect for holding a cloth on your picnic table. Now. I want to mark this. I want to just do some straight quilting lines in my background rectangle and then I'm going to do stitch in the ditch around the tulip, which I don't need to mark. So how about let's find out how wide this um, background rectangle is. Just measure it and let's see. Ooh, it looks about 
five and three eighths inches, and I want to put two lines equally spaced right down through the middle, or basically divide it into thirds. So let's do, let's see, five point, let's see, five point um, three eighths divided by, let me see, divided by three is going to equal, okay, 1.79 sounds like one and three-fourths. That'll work for us. So just take your six by 24 inch ruler, line up one and three-fourths inches right on that seam line. Okay, that's good. Now, one of the marking tools you can use is this one. Now, it's a chalk liner. It just has a piece of uh, ruler right here, a wire ruler, and you just press hard and chalk will come right out of there. Ooh, let me do it again. I'm doing a red line and I bet you can't even see it there. You should see that better. But the chalk works well. Or you can use my favorite tool, which is a Hera marker. Now a Hera marker is just going to leave a crease on it and then you don't ever have to dust it off or wash it out. Just um, place your ruler one and three-fourths inches. Hold your um, Hera marker like a rotary cutter and just crease right along that ruler's edge and then you'll see the crease it makes is in there long enough just until I do my machine quilting and get it done. Now once your lines are marked you can safety pin your whole quilt top. Now I'm going to use one inch safety pins and they are tiny little guys. So it helps if you go ahead and you put a pin cover on it. I know that you go, oh my gosh, why can't you put in safety pins? No problem. But whenever you do a king size quilt and you have to put in 500, you are going to really feel it. So these are just little covers. I'm going to insert right in here and just take a pair of pliers and just squeeze it right into place. Oh, I heard it snap. Okay, now that the safety pin is covered, you have something more to grasp onto. Now, this is a pinning tool. It's got ridges right along here. So I'm just going to tip it right down, take the pin, insert it, and it's going to actually come back up. You catch it right in the ridge and then close it. And you can actually pin your whole quilt much quicker. 500 and a king size, that is going to take some time. Well, as soon as you have your whole quilt pinned and you get rid of all of your tools on top, then you want to make this easy to manage at your sewing machine. So I like to roll it tightly like this and then just use the tool that looks like this. It's round, it's got some clamps on it, it's going to just, just um, grasp right into the quilt. So roll it straight and take the clamp, wrap it around there, and this part is ready for just inserting into the sewing machine. Let me get my machine set up. I am ready to finish this quilt. I have the roll in the arm of my sewing machine, and then the rest of the quilt lays flat over to the left. Now, if you don't have a nice table like this, you can go ahead and set up your ironing board right beside you just to hold all of the weight. Now, I've already put on my walking foot, but there is one more tool that I'd like to show you to help you keep straight lines. This is called a quilting guide, and all it does is follow right along a seam. You can set it at any adjustment just to keep your lines straight. Just take the bar and just put it at the back of your walking foot and just push down and snap it into place. And then I can just go ahead and set it up so that it can go at any adjustment I want. Let me see, a little bit wider there. Okay, I have already put invisible thread on the top of my sewing machine. Now sometimes invisible thread doesn't feed very well through your sewing machine. So I have a second spool, it's sitting up there and oh, it should just slip right through. I have a stitch that I want to show you on my, on my machine that looks like hand stitching. Oh, this is going to be a good one. So I put in a red bobbin thread because that red bobbin thread is going to pop up and you can see it. Now, first, let's just go ahead and bring the bobbin thread up from the bottom, do needle down, needle up. And hold that in place and so that you don't have stitches, you don't have thread running all along the back of your machine, 
just lock it in place. Okay, now my stitch that looks like hand quilting is stitch number 11, and I just tightened my tension. It's actually set at seven, so this is gonna be interesting. Now the machine will just go back and forth, back and forth, doing like a triple stitch, and the bobbin thread actually comes up from the bottom. Now you could put any color of thread in your machine, and your bobbin, you don't have to put in the red thread but I just did it so that you can see it. And you need to have your machine, have your quilt free and loose. Use needle down so that whenever you move it along there, you can see it. Okay, let me just pick up speed. Oh, it helps so much if you have a flat surface. You can put your hand in this triangle shape whenever you stitch. Now I'm just gonna go through the two quilting lines through the, on the um, background rectangle. And then with my walking foot, I'm gonna go back and just do stitch in the ditch around the tulips. And I'm just gonna go back to a regular stitch whenever I do that. And let me see if it's coming off the back end. Great. So you can see that now it would probably look a little bit better if I had something like green thread or could even use natural thread so that you could actually see that stitching just a little bit for that touch of hand quilting. Now I wanna just go ahead, didn't even get to the bottom yet, but you know me, I'm always in such a hurry. I'm just gonna pull that out because I want to change my color of thread and show you how to put on the bobbin. So let me just put in my red in the top and the bottom, get that around there. Ooh, I am the fastest threader on earth. And if I did not have this automatic needle threader, I think that I would be finished sewing. So let me just pop that right through the needle. Whoops, one more time down, move that across, pop that needle through. Oh, great. I thought I was gonna have to have Orion thread all my needles. Okay, I have my um, binding and it's in one long strip already. It's a three inch strip of binding and I pressed it so that the wrong sides are in the inside. All set to go. And I'm just gonna start near a corner so that you can see the corner. That's the most critical part. So, usually you start right in the middle of one side. Let me pull out these clips so I can free that up a little bit. Okay, take the raw edge of the binding and just line it up with the edge of the quilt. And I like to leave about three inches loose right in the end. Let me just slip that right up there. And use the width of your walking foot. And I'm gonna go back to the regular stitch, number one. Gonna lengthen my stitch to like 3.0. Okay, got everything set up. Walking forward, using the width of my uh, walking foot for this seam. Let me just cut this thread right here. And I'm just gonna go right down into the corner. In fact, if you really wanna see this, I'm gonna take that pin out for you. Okay, walk right in there and stop whatever your seam allowance is and use needle down and then raise your quilt to the next side. Oh, you need to have Wheaties for breakfast to move this quilt around. Okay, and once you go to the second side, drop your foot and then just reverse sew right off the end because you want to Take this so you can free it up. Take this corner and fold it up like this. And then once it's folded up like this, fold it again straight back down. Very important to have perfect angles right here, straight across here. And then you can just slip it back into your sewing machine and just start walking forward. And you're gonna do this step on all of the corners, every one of the corners. And then when you get back to the end, you'll just overlap your ends and finish them off. But I'm just gonna stop right here because I wanna show you the corner. So just trim right up to the edge. You could use your walking, your rotary cutter or a pair of scissors, but I'm just gonna trim right up here because I wanna show you this amazing corner. So whenever you do this corner, you just take it, open it up. That's a perfect miter in there. And then from the back side, all you need to do is just tuck the miter in again, tuck the miter in and pin it, covering up that last row of stitching. And then all you need to do is just go ahead and stitch in the ditch from the right side. 
and your binding will be beautiful. Ruby McKim said, isn't it splendid to have an idea in life that we would like to achieve and then begin working on it while we're just boys and girls? Well, she added, one's plans may have to change a bit from time to time, but it's certain if we don't decide on doing something, we shall never do anything. So take this advice from Ruby McKim and decide just which quilt you will make today.